Hello everybody and welcome to the latest episode of Student Dave. Um, so we're going to do the implementation of the 2D column filter for object tracking in an image. Uh, you're going to want to go back and watch the video explaining what this is and what we did in the matrices. And also probably watch the common filter MATLAB implementation in the first one, the one dimensional one, uh, way back. That's the one that basically, I use the similar code here, very, very similar. The structure is very similar, but I just changed the matrices and a couple things here and there. So if you miss any points I'm describing here, I highly recommend to go to that video. So anyways, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to load in the Hexbug image frames. Those will either be on the website or they'll be on MATLAB Central. I haven't found uh, out which one's going to be the best fit just yet, but they'll be there. And they're going to include the coordinates of the automated tracking of the hex bug that I did in the other tutorial on image processing. You can go watch that tutorial to see how these files are made. But basically, they're just files containing the coordinates based upon automated tracking. Um, during one segment of the tracking, I add in some noise, uh, some slight noise. I add in a lot of noise, and then I just remove the tracking altogether. So we could see how the automated system can fail and the way the common filter can help us out in those contexts. So let's just do the easy one first. Here's defining our variables. The important variables are going to be the ones down here. Um, this one right here. So this is just kind of initializing different things and in, in defining how much acceleration magnitude and whatnot. This is the noise magnitude in the process. And this is basically saying how much variability do we expect to see in the process. You know, if this hex bug moves very smoothly, we should expect some very low variability in how it moves from moment to moment. But if we give it a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, error of, uh, variability, we're basically saying that while we have this process, we expect there to be a lot of jumping around. This bug's going to move all over the place. However, on the measurement side, we could say that, well, regardless of what the process is, if we're very confident of our measurement, if our noise is very low, we should be very confident when we get it and kind of ignore what we're seeing in the process if they're different. And so this is kind of like an interplay of these two distributions. And the common filter allows you an optimal way of combining them, given your expectations for both. And so you play with these values, and you can start to change the way the system is performing. Now, the covariance matrices, again, is going to be independent for the x and y regarding the measurement. And then for the uh, state update, remember I explained that the that the covariances, I mean the uh, variances and error are going to be independent. The x's and the y's are separate, so you're going to get this funny matrices. And then we'll initialize our position variance there. And then we'll define our uh, state update matrices. So remember, A, this is representing just for the x, and this is separating out the x and y uh, equations. This is for the acceleration, input acceleration uh, matrices. And this is for our measurement. We're just measuring the x and y position. We're not measuring the velocities. And then we initialize this just to store the data. And this, again, is just for uh, initializations and plotting. OK, so let's go to start. Um, we have our starting frame. Let me just show you a particular example. We'll actually, let's start at frame 150 so we can get a, a tracking on the bug a little bit. OK, so we're going to load in an image. And then we're going to save in the particular values where the uh, hex bug should be, uh, given the automated tracking. That's what this is. Now we're going to do the common update on that. And that goes back to the last tutorial. It's literally the same equations now. They just have a different shape matrices with the exact same functions. Store out the data. And then let's just plot the data real quick. OK. So uh, they kind of overlap here because you picked the exact same values. <laughs> but I just kind of made a little circle so you could see them moving around, and the circles are centered at the tracking point. The red is going to be the new common filter tracking, and the green is going to be the old like automatic tracking. And so let's see how the system performs. Let's just go ahead and start off at image 10. And so the tracking is going to be bad at first because there's nothing to track. And then we're going to kind of see it evolve as the structure goes. And you kind of see how this thing's got this velocity component as it kind of sways and, and goes past a little bit. So here it is. It's tracking. It's tracking. Well, it's, I mean, it's not tracking. It's pretty awful. But remember, the red is the common and the green is the automated. So there's the red tracking. And it's kind of, there it goes. And you can watch it here. As it starts to track the bug, it kind of swings out a little bit and then finds its way back to the bug. And that's kind of nice. It's showing this kind of, <coughs> you know, this uh, normal kind of natural motion you'd see among um, objects and um, moving around and things like that. And here's where we add the noise. And you can see that the common filter, for a large part, is robust to a lot of the error. Not really perfectly robust, but, you know, largely robust to it. 
And so that's important, that when your tracking's bad, the common filter can help your model, uh, help your tracking stay on task when you get these errors and maybe the camera shut off or someone turned on the light and screwed up the tracking or whatnot. So this is the easier model one. So let's see how it does when, the, when we have a lot of noise. This is when it's very, very bad noise. Okay, here we go, here we go. It's all over the place still. All over the place. In comes the uh, in comes my arm, and there's the tracking, and then it forgets my arm, starts tracking the bug, and boom, there we go. And he's following him, following him, following him, and no problems. It's going to be exactly the same tracking as before. Probably just a little bit of slightly different variables. You can kind of see around the curve, kind of falls off a little bit, lags, and then here's a lot of noise. Now, see, I mean, that noise is pretty massive, and so it does its best, but it's, I mean, it's definitely losing it for a, a good degree. But then eventually it gets back on it when the uh, signal stabilizes. So when you have this more kind of, um, when you have it very, very tightly coupled to the, the process, you can kind of see this lagging effect. It's smooth, but it's a little bit laggy. And now let's do the last one. This one's kind of my fun, the funner one, I think that this is where there's no tracking. Now because there's no tracking during the segment, we don't do the calm on gain update. What that is, I shut off this part of the code over here. And the reason is that there's no measurement to compare, so you just shut this part off. All we're going to use is the state update to uh, modify the prediction. Now let's see how this does um, with just that. Okay, so again, we're back here. This is just going all over the place. Maybe I should have cut this segment out. Anyways, okay, here's a tracking of the hand. It's come on tracking of my arm. And then we track the bug. Okay, so here the bug goes around. Again, nothing's going to be any different here. Just kind of, I don't know, watching it now. <laughs> there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. And then watch. Here's where he's going to lose the tracking, but he's still moving forward. Tracking's gone now. And you can see it's lagging. You know, it's not following him exactly but it's still remembering what the velocity and position was and so it was able to update it. Now see that's the real power I think of this kind of method is that it allows you to use your model. You have your model of how the system's behaving and so the last time you saw the system behaving keep going with that and that's the idea. It allows you a lot of ways to take what you know and put it into your tracking so that you can get optimal uh, tracking at least given uh, the resources you have and information you have. Okay, um, that's it for right now, and please remember to subscribe, and I'll get some new videos out soon. See ya.